Hello guys, how are you doing today? Um, I am joining you on this beautiful Friday. But in Shanghai, I just learned that it's actually Saturday. <laughs> so yes, this is Sacred Para coming with you with another awesome edition about storyline creation and development. But we're doing a little bit of a twist on our classic IG lives in which we are going to be talking to Desiree Dolls about her awesome and amazing doll line and how diversity fits into what she does. Hello husband. So without further ado, I will be joining her in so that we can get this discussion going. I'm going to call her. So yes, today is a different kind of live in that we are having it a little later than usual as as I, I just now I really learned that in Shanghai it was already Saturday and I thought about it earlier today I was like hmm I wonder if it's Saturday <laughs> in Shanghai um, when it's still Friday here and so it was so I, I had to apologize for you know not understanding the, the time zones but this is all new to us and we're just really um, enjoying enjoying our ourselves <laughs> when it comes to doing these IG lives. So as you can tell, Gloria, my co-host, is back. She's waving. She had a very good vacation, she told me, and she's looking forward to being able to share those stories. And she is here. I invite you to go live in their doll room. Let me see here. I was invited to go live. So, I invited her, and I think that she's inviting me. We're both inviting each other to go live. All right. Let me try one more time. I'm going to send her an invite, and then I may have to go on her page. All right, so I'm going to send out this invite again. We're going to get this going. So, yes, Gloria has come back from vacation. Hi, how are you? Hey, I'm great. Thank you. Um, good, I'm good. I was just explaining to them earlier that we were trying to get this time zone together. <laughs> yeah, it's ridiculous. It's so crazy trying to match everything up. But I'm so grateful we made it work. I'm happy. Yes. <laughs> thank you and thank you for your patience I, <laughs> and I was wondering I was saying it earlier I said I wondered if it was already Saturday there before you know before we have our actual Saturday right so now we know <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> we do this again guitar compared to you <laughs> <laughs> and I, it's true it's so true yeah, it, is. it is so how's your day going um it just started so <laughs> um That's true. Got a busy day ahead, but I'm happy to start it like this. You know, it gets me super motivated. Talking about dolls is like my passion, so I'm super excited. Exactly, exactly. So I want to know, since yeah. we're going right into it without further ado, what is your history with dolls? Like, what was your childhood like? Okay, so growing up, I loved dolls. I was super in love with dolls. Um, my family weren't like super rich or anything. So like on a Saturday morning, my mom would take me to this um, car boot sale um, where they'd have like um, Bratz dolls that had like been taken out of the package and just put in like a clear plastic wallet. And she'd always buy me one and I was obsessed with them. And you know, once in a while I'd always get like, you know, the fresh doll from the shops and I just was super in love, Bratz, My Scene, Barbie, all of those things. Yeah. And then um, I will never forget a conversation I had with my brother-in-law, shout out to Sean, he's probably still sleeping in the UK. But mm -hmm. um, I was about 15 years old and he was like, what is your purpose in life? Like, what do you want to do? What are you passionate about? What do you care about? And like, I literally still have the notes till today. I'm 24 now, 25 this year. So almost 10 years ago. Okay. Um, yeah. And I said, well, I like dolls. And he was like, okay, so what can you do with dolls? And I was like, you know what? I think I want to start my own line of dolls. And um, 
back then I think I'd been trying to create a collection of black dolls so that I can one day pass it to you know my daughters when I have them and things like that and it was very very difficult very difficult this was before Barbie started doing their whole new diversity range so um yes I was on a mission from 15 to 24 to get my own doll line so since 15 I spent all my time researching 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 in school I was a bit of a loner but I would take my laptop and I'd just be researching suppliers tailors this and that and you know I'm so grateful that it's 2021 and I've finally begun to make it happen and the goal is to one day take over Barbie and you know have <laughs> the dolls be you know the doll you know. Yes, yes. Now, what made you name... No, Well, I have, like, so many different questions. Go for it. One being, did you grow up in Shanghai? No. So, I only moved to Shanghai last year, mid-pandemic, which is crazy. Um, I graduated from university, and I just thought, I want to go away somewhere. I want to I wanna live, you know, I want to see something different, do something different. Um, and I'm so grateful I did because I've made so many friends here. There's a massive black community here that I never thought would have existed. So like all of my friends are black from South Africa, from America, from the UK, um, like were from everywhere. And it's just a huge wow. family. And I always call them my Shanghai family or my family away from home. Because, you know, you need that community. It's super important. I agree. Yeah, I agree. So, like, when you were growing up, how accessible were black dolls? Because just like you said, when it comes to, well, you know, I, I'm a little bit older than you. <laughs> so growing up, you know, we really haven't had a lot of black dolls. Right. Um as far as I can tell, until recently, like within yeah. what about the past year or two, yeah. when they've had the fashion shows. Um, so before then, it was you know you had like your black holiday Barbie or you know yeah. whenever they had you know like the Christine mode. Yeah. Um, for you, how easy was it to access black dolls? Um, it wasn't that accessible. Um, I remember you know going to I don't know if you have this store in America, but we have a, a store called Argos, and. Um, they would have the baby Annabelle dolls and you'd buy it but then they'd give you a white baby Annabelle and it's like girl <laughs> I don't want that um they had the black baby Annabelle but it was rare to actually find and buy it yourself um the only black dolls that I really saw was um the Bratz dolls and then you had my scene with the one black doll and then they had like the other white dolls so I felt like there was always just a sprinkle of diversity and it's like maybe I don't want a black doll that looks like that I want a black doll that looks like this and if they did have a black doll they'd have straight hair or be like blonde or like have these crazy colors and I'm like that's okay but we want it all we want it all I want a doll with an afro that has curly hair and I didn't have that mm -hmm. growing up so now we're going into what I like to speak about which is representation Absolutely. Because I'm very certain that there's a, that, you know, there may be some people on here who just honestly, you know, you may rewatch this particular live and you're going, why is this so important? Why can't you just yeah. buy it all and be happy with it? So my question to you would be, why is it so important to have black dolls? Why is it so important to have these dolls that has the, you know, curly hair or kinky hair or textured hair? Why is it so important to have all these different shades of brown? Like, why can't we just be happy with with the one doll <laughs> that represents all black people? Um, I love that question because there are, the answer isn't a short answer. It goes very, very deep. Um, and I feel like one of our, one of the ethoses that we have with Desiree is um, discovering identity through play. And I feel like um, even my um, shirt says, a people without knowledge of their roots, their past, their history is like a tree with no roots um so i feel like it's super important to know who you are and as children we develop our identity we develop our communication our confidence through play so that is the root of desiree dolls we want young black girls to be proud of who they are where they come from 
by starting off three play you know they're young we're not going to have a whole speech and lecture about this is where you come from this is what happens this is what the world is like for black women for black people but we can ease them into it we can ease them into the conversation by actually having things they can play with that represent yes. them and um i i believe that you know we have to know our culture we have to know where we come from and we have to be proud of what we look like um back in the day i relaxed my hair i was such a wiggy i I still am a little bit but i've never been more proud to rock my afro out in public um i've never been more proud to represent like my nigerianness and my blackness so i feel like the importance of having black dolls with curly hair and afros is to let young black girls know that you are beautiful you deserve to have toys that look like you um growing up i always wanted to have long hair and straight hair oh i wish my eyes were lighter and that is or my skin was a little bit lighter and it's so wrong for young girls to believe that and i speak to um other doll fans black doll fans i speak to friends and my dissertation in university was about colorism and racism and it's a huge issue within our community and as well as the wider community so the aim of desiree dolls is to like change the mindset of the next generation yes yes i fully agree with you because one of the things that i remember growing up as a kid and and I was a huge Barbie girl, you know, just, you know, if you wanted to get me something for my birthday or Christmas, you already knew what it was. You didn't even have to ask me. (laughs) It was just, I was very easy. But there's this unconscious level of communication that your dolls give to you. Cause it's a very, it's a, it's a reciprocal kind of relationship that we have with our dolls. So as much as we admire them, they're also speaking to us non-verbally yeah. so if they have their straight hair and they have their light color eyes what it communicates to us is you're not acceptable the way that you are right so we need you to change <laughs> when you get to this the stage when your breasts are growing and and you're more fully a woman you need to look like her yeah and i believe that what you're doing is emphasizing no you need to embrace who you are yeah that who you are is beautiful just as you as you are so yeah. allowing yourself to grow up feeling worth so i totally love what you're doing and how you're doing it and i want to applaud you for doing it that was why i asked you to do this on this live and i was still hoping to like be able to obtain one of your dolls beforehand which while we're talking about that could you please let people know how they can buy your dolls absolutely you can order through instagram i believe you can order through facebook and let me can i pin a comment i'll put um our website in yes. comment desireedolls.com um you can pay through paypal use your card i promise we're not a scam <laughs> no you're not <laughs> this is um, the real thing it's the real and i will write that at the bottom of this live as well yeah um can i so, um, no i can't okay so, desireedolls.co.uk okay. i'm okay. so glad yeah, that you delete know. that it's dot com dot com <laughs> dot com dot com dot uk just dot com oh it dot com. is trying desiree dolls dot com. com that's it now what made you choose the name desiree dolls um i love that question as well um <laughs> so my nigerian name is um adesola which means to come into wealth um so oh, when wow. i was about 11 my mom just started calling me disiri disiri liwa um disiri or disiri ala, which basically means to come into good things so um that is kind of the declaration mm-hmm. for like our customers anyone that interacts with the desiree brand um this year means to come into good things we want you to come into peace you want you to come into confidence self-worth wisdom knowledge understanding joy every good thing to <laughs> to come into all of it so i, um, like I it. feel like that that name means so much to me because it's a declaration it's not just oh it sounds pretty there's a whole meaning and history behind it and like literally before desiree Dolls was a brand people started calling me Desiree and also weird because it's like that's not my name and my mom just decided to change my name and it caught on and like all my friends would be like oh hey Desiree hey Desiree and I'm like okay I guess this is my name now 
and that's how I got the name Desiree. Literally. Wow, wow. I think moms do that though. It's like it's just a mom privilege. My mother used right? to do that to me. My name is totally, <laughs> totally different than what she used to call me. She used to call me Missy. She's like, you know, we're out in public. I'm gonna call you Missy. My name is nowhere close to Missy, <laughs> but that was just what she called me. So, <laughs> yeah, so what yeah. They're doing. They know exactly what they're doing when they change your name. <laughs> They do, they do. But with your name, Desiree, like you said, has such great meaning. But I smiled because it reminded me of everything you said about coming on to joy, coming on to wealth, and coming on to self acknowledgement. It just reminded me of Galatians and the fruit of the Spirit and just being able to receive all those awesome things that, right. that you had stated whenever you are purchasing this doll. It's more than just a beautiful face, which your dolls are very beautiful. You. It's this also all of the affirmations that you're receiving with the doll. Absolutely. Now, one of the things I do want to say, I mean, it may seem like a simple question, but can anyone buy your dolls? Because I'm certain that there's probably going to be maybe just one person on here who's going, you know, well, I'm not black. Yeah. Can I buy your dolls? So, so is it open to everyone to buy? Absolutely. Anyone, everyone can buy it. I've sold some here in China and they were not black. <laughs> so, um, I believe that, well, we grew up playing with white dolls and i know it had an, a whole impact on us but i feel like there's nothing wrong with having a black doll a white doll a male doll a female doll um our our play should be representative of our lives and for, yes. for children the play should be representative of their lives and there are black people in their lives so you know it's okay for a black doll and a white doll to be friends and to for kids to create narratives around those relationships. Um, I feel like hopefully, well, let me not say that, but I believe that the whole idea of race will not be such a huge issue if the next generation yes. grow up with not having it be such a huge issue, you know? So if white girls are playing with black dolls, seeing a black girl wouldn't be anything or seeing a girl with an Afro wouldn't be anything because, you know, my doll has an Afro hair, so you know you look like my exactly. doll you're so pretty her hair's so pretty you look like my doll and that's the sort of thing i'm trying to go for and that's the how i'm glad I'm that you do bring that up. i'm glad you brought that up as far as with hair um <laughs> because we talk about in our culture we talk about the importance of not touching our hair yeah. uh, <laughs> we talk about you know even having in our music like don't touch my hair <laughs> um and and of course for us that has a lot of historical value yes. as far as feeling and being treated like a pet so you don't really want to you know objectify us by just touching on our hair randomly uh but in the same hand with what you're saying as far as having our young people become more acclimated with their doll's hair with understanding, okay, this texture feels different than exactly. this straighter hair. That way, when they go out in public, they're not just going, hey, can I touch your Ooh, hair? Yeah. Why does your yeah. hair look different? Why does it feel different? Because they've already gotten accustomed to their dolls having different hair. Right. So if we can introduce them early to understand that everyone has different hair textures, everyone has different hair complexions, we're different colors, just like your crayons or your flowers, but we're one and the same. Right. And like you said, it will help with embracing the differences so that we don't have so many issues in the future with race. Because a lot of the issues we have right now, I'm like, someone didn't play a lot when they were younger. <laughs> we shouldn't have these issues so in 2021. Segregated. And, you know, we have completely different cultures. But, it's, you know, I find the whole idea of racism and those things so silly because, like, we're really at the core of it. And I've learned this living in China in a country where, like, black people aren't anything to them you know but what at the core of it we're all the same we all have the same will we all everybody wants love everyone wants shelter everyone wants to be warm yes. everyone wants to eat so at the core of it we're all the same it's just that we look a little bit different and once we can get past that looking different then things should be easier i know i say that idealistically but you know, it really doesn't have to be as complicated as it is. So introducing these things through play, hopefully it carries on through life and we see those changes. I agree. I fully agree with you. And I, I would say even like, how, how would you um, address how that, uh, how that 
works for us as adults because we're on here on a on a platform where where we're you know socializing through our play and interactions through yeah. our own dolls as adults so how would you um translate that to us as adults and how we can be able to incorporate dolls of color into play into for adults um i think that's interesting because before I started Desiree Dolls and before I jumped jumped on Instagram or Dollstagram, um, I did not know there were so many adults that played with dolls and I'm like, this is my dream. This is my Instagram. I have my personal Instagram, but Desiree Dolls is my Instagram. So um, I feel like us adults that play with dolls are living our childhood dreams or our childhood yes. um, desire, should I say. Um, I think that we are finally getting to enjoy play with Oh, it looks like we had a connection problem. So I'm going to actually phone her back in. I was informed that my screen got fuzzy and the video just kind of paused. And I do want to say thank you to everyone who is still on here. I am, or today I am, Mr. Louis Baton, my husband, my froggy stuff. Thank you for being on here and being able to listen to the creator of Desiree Dolls. Uh, and she tells us about her amazing dolls. All right. Okay. I think we're back on. We're back. We're back. Okay. Yeah. Um, so to answer your question, I don't know if you heard anything I said, but I'll just start again. So um, I feel like You're us fine. adults that are playing with dolls, that are playing with black dolls, are living our childhood desires again. And I yes. feel like maybe in terms of identity, because you're kind of already set in who you are as you get older. But I do think that it gives us the chance to soothe our childhood insecurities and things like that. Because sometimes I look at my yes. dolls and I'm just like, when I was a child, I didn't have you. You're so pretty. I wish I had you, <laughs> you know, and it makes me happy. And it kind of just makes me a little bit excited. Thank you, everybody, for coming back, by the way. <laughs> and not yeah. Yes. Um, yeah, so I do think that it heals part of our inner um, insecurities that may have developed through childhood. Even though we're older mm -hmm. and we grow and we learn, um, I do think that it does soothe our inner babies. I, I love that because I'm all about healing. I, <laughs> I have a background with psychology and communications and as well as with um, social work and then with counseling. So healing and play therapy is just yeah. so important. And I believe that we do kind of just, you know, separate that from ourselves. And we see play therapy as just being for kids, but it's for us as adults, no matter how old we are, because, you know, Absolutely. you know, we're single and we're adults, if we're married and we're adults, if we're, yeah. you know, elderly age, it doesn't matter. It's still something that, that is there to help us on our journey to be whole and to be healthy so i really do agree with you that if dolls was not like for example my mother i think the first black doll didn't come out until the 70s i want to say or like I late 60s so. i think it was, so it was so like, like, <laughs> yeah by the time she came by the time that 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 doll came out she was already a teenager right so she kind of already you know she had already kind of like transitioned from playing dolls yeah but there was still this desire to be able to, you know, recapture that because she didn't have a black doll. Yeah. So now, you know, she's more, you know, she gets into buying the dolls with me or she'll be like, hey, I just saw this doll. Did you see this one? Yeah, <laughs> because she didn't have that growing. Yeah, so you're right. It's about really being able to fill the gap of what we didn't have. And mm -hmm. I think that that's an important, you know, an important part to put on here, uh, important comment because we as our as our people you know we didn't have those dolls yeah. so we did have to either play with the white dolls or you just didn't play at all if you had a very you know strict 
kind of family where they were like, we're not buying those dolls because they don't yeah. represent you, then you missed out on that. Yeah. So, you you know, it is important to, no matter how old you are, don't feel ashamed. Go buy you a doll. You can do it discreetly online. <laughs> Go to DesireeDolls.com. Yes. Buy your doll. Order it. You know, and you'll have her at home. If you want to post pictures, you can. Yeah. If you just want to get acclimated, and, you know, just play and, and just get in touch with who you are on the inside before you post anything. Do that. Um, now, I saw you do have your doll. Yes. Do you I mind bringing her to the screen and showing her articulation? Okay, show them. Yes. Okay, so this is well they're all called Desiree um I was actually taking okay. some photos so she's got like her oolong tea ready for summer to go <gasps> you know <laughs> um, I think this is I one like of my it. favorites because I really love the jumpsuit outfit and the the gold like band it. this is really me this is my style I could wear this in real life so one of my faves um I think this is a customer favorite um the oh. traditional Desiree and I love this one because it reminds me of um the the hall parties like our African mothers in the UK used to go to so I'm Nigerian Ghanaian West African East African they pretty much dress like this with different materials so it gives me that oh my god you remind me of my mom <laughs> and you know I love the yeah would that be a daily wear or is that just something that she would wear well, when, when she's going to an actual like event. So um, my mother would wear it to events. Sometimes you would wear it to church, you know, for your Sunday best. Or if you want to stunt on some haters, you got to, you know, <laughs> <laughs> give it to them with the head tie as well. So I really love this and I love I like the color. It. And you've got the cute earrings to go with it as well. Um, I like that. Another customer fave is the Princess Desiree because, you know, we're queens and we're princesses yes. and we are royalty and we believe in, you know, who we are. So I really love this yes. simple look, but it's it makes a statement. Yes. Um, and the bold colours are everything. And she's got her Afro suit with the tiara because who knew a tiara could fit on an Afro? <laughs> so... <laughs> Now you do. Now you know. Um, so I love this one. I like. It. Yeah, and the final one is um this pretty girl over here with the nice yes. fishtail dress. I love this dress. Again, this is another dress I would wear in real life. I'm just looking for the right tailor. Um, oh, Victoria's <laughs> babe. Yes, yeah, Shade has the full set. She has all four of them for her daughter, and she said that's her fave. Um, and yeah. Yes. I just, Yes, it's giving me catwalk model vibes. So, you yes, know, a princess. We have a model. We have your businesswoman. We have your auntie or your mom. So we're representing everyone. You know, and yes, we hope to expand. We really want to expand and do more dolls. We just need people to support, um, and we will get there. I have no doubt about it. I love my Well, <laughs> we are definitely going to be supporting. I, they are beautiful. Now, now, are you making their outfits, their, their, their attire? Who's making their clothes? They're so, beautiful. I live in China, so we do have a manufacturer out here that does all of that for okay. us. And, um, yeah, they've been great. They've been great and super supportive. They are beautiful. Are you going to have any guys with them in the future as well? I would love to do guys. I'm ready to do guys. I'm ready to do new outfits, new themes. Um, there's so much of, there's so much black culture and I want to address all of it. You know, I want to do like a carnival themed Barbie. I want to do like a prom Barbie. Not Barbie, Desiree. No more Barbie, Desiree. A prom Desiree. It's okay, it's okay, Desiree. We I mean, know it's Desiree. <laughs> now, yes, now so. will you do me a favor? Do you mind bringing up one of your Desiree gals and just showing us her points of articulation so that everyone can see that, yes, they do move? Because I know that that's probably one of the questions. Like, well, does she move? Yes. Can I sit her down in my dioramas? She is flexible. She can give you a little... Oh, that's what uh, doing. Yeah, she's doing. <laughs> 360. Okay, her point. wrist moves. Her wrist moves, her elbows move, her arm moves. She can so sit down, her knees bend. 
you know, her knees okay. crossed. So she's fully flexible. Yeah. And then what about her head? Is her head up and down or so that so, so when you guys are doing your tilts around. So when you're doing your photos, you're yeah. able to get that that pose that you guys are needing. She moves just don't so hey you guys. <laughs> DesireeDolls.com, DesireeDolls.com, you have some beautiful girls, and you also have beautiful outfits, you got points of articulation, just in case that light hits from the ring light, you can go ahead and move that head down, right. and there's no reflection, so <laughs> I'm just putting it out there, so that when we buy these dolls, we don't have any reason for saying, hey, I... I have questions. I don't know. You've yeah. already learned it. She showed you beautiful girls. There's four of them. DesireeDolls.com. So, yes, I will most definitely be having one or two or four. <laughs> Just like, was it today? Yes, today underscore I am. She said she has all four. So, yes, yes, there are four support these dolls because they're beautiful. And on top of that, like we just got done talking about, it's important for everyone everyone to be able to feel represented and that's what your dolls do they do help us feel represented and include it and especially for our young girls who are growing up and they're seeing all different kind of images they need to be able to have some stability and knowing who they are absolutely so i really do i like what you have i like what you're doing can you kind of give us and i understand that the process took years like yeah. literally a decade to be able to do can, can you kind of um, shorten it and, and you know give us a um, yeah. what am I trying to say just so give us a summary of, of what that process was like to to bring about course. Desiree Dolls yeah the process wasn't actually long it was um, preparing myself to begin the process that took the time so um, I had the vision when I was 15 I wrote it down um, and mm. I think for f five years five or six years um I was just researching and sitting down with like mentors and people that do business and things like that I'm um, just asking questions where can I go how am I going to make this happen do I have to learn how to make dolls myself do I have to learn how to sew you know so I spent so many years trying to figure out how do I actually do this and then um I found um, a manufacturer online I contacted them I explained to them what I want and they were like yeah sure we can do that but I was 20 and in university and super broke. So <laughs> I couldn't afford to actually um, bring it to life. And then um, my university actually had a competition where they were giving um, grants to um, entrepreneurs. Wow. So I applied, I did the boot camp. They had a two day boot camp and I did that. And um, you had to pitch your idea, you had to do a business plan, a cash flow record. There was so much to do, like in terms of business wise. And I'm a creative, I don't do numbers, I don't all of that stuff. <laughs> but <laughs> I, had yeah, no, no. I had to learn in that process. So um, I, you know, thank God I won. I was number one and they gave me a lot of money. <laughs> and it was, you do what you need to do with it for your business. like there's no limit to what you need to do as long as it's for your business yeah. so um I did wow. that and then I supplemented the money with a business loan and um I, I to match it and once that was done I was good to go I set up my website went into manufacturing um and it kind of took off from there, made my Instagram. And then I started following some amazing doll pages. And I'm like, wow, the inspiration. I didn't know that these things could be done. I didn't know people actually um, took pictures of dolls and really were enthusiastic about it. So I got a lot of inspiration from pages like yours and started taking pictures. Oh. Um, um, I want to give a shout out to Lewis that was the, here in the, the live as well. He helped me take pictures because I'm not a photographer. I can just pose them, but I can't capture them. So he helps me capture them and I'm so grateful. Um, and now that I'm in China, I have to do it myself. But um, yeah, we're, we're, we're doing it. And I'm, it was such a quick and easy process. Once the, the funds were there, it became smooth sailing and you know I talked to my mum all the time when I told her I wanted to do dolls I was really nervous because we're Nigerian so it's like education work and she was like that is a really good idea like I'm so proud of you go for it do it don't let anything limit you from achieving this um so 
she really gave me the motivation that I needed to do. Thank you, Sean. Um, I gave you a shout out <laughs> earlier on because you are literally the reason I even came up with the idea. Um, and I would say this, um, purpose is everything. Um, everything that we do with Desiree has a purpose. Every blog that we write, every picture that we post, every doll that we will release has a purpose. And it literally is the driving force for what we do. So that has kept me going. Support. I like that. Yeah. I like that. And actually that was gonna be one of my questions. Like, what would you say for someone who has a vision that's bigger than them. And I imagine like creating a dog line is bigger yeah. than you. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. you, you can customize a doll that's your one, that, that, that's like your one and only doll, but yet to create a whole doll line and then having it available for, for purchase yes. is a vision bigger than yourself. So I was going to ask you, what would you advise someone who has a vision that's bigger than yourself, but then you actually answered it as far as purpose has everything to do with what you yeah. do everything anything else that you would add to that for someone um, who has a vision bigger than them um just i love that you use the word a vision bigger than you because before i started like every single night i would envision what i wanted desiree dolls to look like and sometimes it would give me anxiety because i'm like how am i gonna i can't do this like me i can't do this is too big i was so intimidated by the vision but um, one thing I always say is um, don't be intimidated by your vision. Trust the process. Um, everything, everything, every step, every win, every loss will work towards the end goal. Um, there's been so much that um, I've gained, so much that I've lost trying to build this business. But everything works together um, at the end of the day. Um, every step is a lesson embrace it don't run away from it don't feel like a failure embrace every single step it's all part of your story and i would say i want my story to be epic by the end of it <laughs> i want to look yes. back at my life and be like that is a movie you started a business you lived in china you did this you did that <laughs> you know so every step is is um important every step every single step Okay. Even the years I like not doing anything, the years I spent not doing anything, I did something, you know, and it contributed to today. So. I like that. I like that. Because it's very easy, so easy <laughs> to yeah. have regret yeah. or to feel like, okay, you know, because most of our life is spent in doing mundane things. So I was like, how does this fit into a greater goal? You know, yeah. I have this vision over here. But it's just like you said, you had a vision for your dolls. Yeah. And you had did all this research, but yet you didn't have the, the fundability. Yeah. And just by you waiting and, you know, still sticking to what your main purpose is and your main goal, yeah. you were able to have this grant fall into your lap. And, of course, right. you still had to do work. Yeah. It still required work, but you were prepared for it. So yeah. I really, I'm glad that you did say that as far as just really staying focused. And that even, like, the times when, when you're in rest or you're not really doing anything, you know, it still accounts for the end goal. And for you being able to be motivated and stay motivated for that opportunity that will that will open up. Exactly. So I do. I like what you said, and and I take it for myself as well. <laughs> yeah, just to add to <laughs> I that, do. I do. So can I just add to that? Um, I always yes. Said that, um, wh while I was in the whole research phase, like the five years of researching, I always said that um, I'm going to know so much about dolls that when that opportunity comes. I'm going to be ready. Like, there's no, oh, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to say. I know because I've been researching this. I might not have had it in my hand, but it's always been in my heart. And I said I was going to be ready. And I and now I've only been selling dolls for a year and, like, you know, being an actual doll entrepreneur <laughs> for a year. And I... I'm not going to but you know, I feel like I'm an expert because I've spent so much time, invested so much time into learning my craft. And um, yeah, so I said that I'm going to know whenever the opportunity comes, I don't care if it's in 20 years or next year or tomorrow, I'm going to be ready. So I feel like that's another thing for, you know, people that are interested in doing, doing anything, be ready because you never know when the opportunity will come. I like that. I like that. Um, there's a statement my husband always tells our kids. He's like, 
if you're ready, you don't have to get ready. And That's it's true. It. If you're already ready, you don't have to get ready. That's like it. we'll tell them, hey, if you got your shoes on, then when we go to the store, you, you know, we say, hey, come along. You're already ready. Versus right. being like, oh, I got to get my shoes on. I got to do this and that. Exactly. <laughs> and that's the same with life you know exactly. if you're ready you don't have to get ready exactly. so i do i like that. now i was i was just about to ask you how long have you been selling dolls but you already answered that a year uh, one of the things that i would like to ask you is what has surprised you in being you know and and, and literally doing it getting beyond just the being prepared and and the process of making and creating the dolls and hooking up with the tailors and stuff what has surprised you I think the one thing that surprised me, and I've already mentioned this, is the doll community, the adult doll community. I did not know there was such a community <laughs> for adults. And I came on Instagram, I thought I had found the promised land. I'm like, okay, this is amazing. This is amazing. So I'm not just targeting to kids anymore. I'm not just targeting to parents anymore. I'm targeting to anybody that loves dolls that loves fashion that loves culture yes. that loves history so that kind of opened up a whole new um customer base and like now i'd have to make my instagram so childish i can do pretty much anything that i want to do yes yes i agree with you now your dolls like they're they, they have such history each one of them does the question that I imagine maybe one person may have is, is it okay for me to customize the doll? Is it okay for me to take, you know, take off her outfit and put on something different? Your Desiree doll is yours. You are free to do whatever you want with her. Just treat her with respect. And, you know, just remember that this is um, a representation of something, you know, bigger than myself. This is a, a reflection of you and your life, your friendships or whatever. So make it yours. She is yours and do what you like with it. Honestly, you can put on, you can design your own clothes. You can buy some clothes to put it on. I do it myself. I have some extra outfits that aren't mine that I put on her. Just, you know, you want something different sometimes. So absolutely customize away. She is yours. Absolutely. Good, good, good. Because I wanted to ask that. I'm just trying to think, like, what other questions that someone else may have in order to bring that, you know, bring that to the plate while we're talking. But I've enjoyed talking to you. I'm so excited for what you're doing Me with too. your, with your you. mind. I'm going to open up the floor uh, in case anyone has any questions or comments. And like we said, all the dolls are available at DesireeDolls.com. Yes. So, oh, okay. and what is, how much do they cost? That would so be one of the questions. In pounds, it is 20 pounds, which is about, I want to say, $15, $16, I think. Okay. So 20 pounds or 15 16 US dollars. Yes. I'm not too sure about the conversion. Yeah, yes. Debrie.com. And I'm going to also include it. At the bottom, because once when it gets, well, once when this live gets posted, all the comments will be gone. Okay, but okay. I will post it at the very bottom of our uh, of our live DesireeDolls dot com, and I've said it probably about twelve <laughs> times. <laughs> Trying to get it in the head, yeah. Go to DesireeDolls dot com. When is Desiree Dolls gonna, gonna have her kid? <laughs> Desiree, that was one of the wants questions. to have her Ken. She wants to have her Ken, but he won't be called Ken. Um, but we're just waiting to, um, once we fully establish ourselves and we have like a regular income, so we have money that we can reinvest, we, <laughs> Desiree needs a Dio. I love it. Dio's a Nigerian name, so I love it. <laughs> Um, so, yeah, we are planning that. It's part of the vision. We just need the... <laughs> so please support um show one of my dolls i will show you all of my dolls <laughs> there you go that's actually my mom <laughs> they are my babies yes. <laughs> i don't know if you can see all of them Beautiful. we'll start doing my favorite one as i mentioned earlier i was doing a shoot so she's got her her cup with her um a nice jumpsuit and some cute little heels because you know oh yes yes i like that. And the i like that bracelet there we go 
very quickly. Look at the details. You said the articulation. Yes, the earrings are my favorite. The joints are yes. movable. 360, all of them. And the legs as well. Again, with the shoes. The traditional. And the shoes. And we've got the Princess Desiree. Very beautiful. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. I hope you like them. Please visit Desiree's Dolls .com. <laughs> Yes. Yes. I'm trying to see if there was any other questions that I have. Uh, what are your, what would be, and, and, and this is kind of like a, an ending question, but what would be your goal that you see with your dolls as far as like, where do you see your dolls in five years? Um, I want to see my dolls in major retail stores, not just in the UK, but across the US, um, Africa, and things like that. I really want these dolls to become mainstream and not just, you know, a niche thing. Um, like I said, representation is so important. And we do see black dolls now. We don't see black African dolls. We don't see black Caribbean dolls. We don't, we don't show the part of blackness that um, lives in us, you know. So I yes. do want to show that. <laughs> um, <laughs> my goal is massive. I, I want it to be international. So when I sold my first doll in America, I was like, oh, my God, I'm officially international. When I sold my first doll in China, I was like, I'm... I'm gonna do it. It's possible. It is possible. So um absolutely trying to <laughs> and there's a Ray theme park. Why not? Barbie has a store <laughs> all over the world. Yeah. T shirts is everything. I want to do everything. And the vision in my head is so vast, it's so big. I'm just taking it one day at a time, but I have no doubt that it can be successful. I agree. I agree. Um, and I, I did. I saw some of what what he said as far as if your goal is not big enough, you need to go back to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to go to a Desiree theme park. <laughs> Mr. Lewis Vuitton said worldwide. I yeah. I am I am with you as far as it being international and worldwide, and really just like you said, t shirts, merch, getting it into different stores because we don't have enough um, celebration about who we are culturally. As far yeah. as being African, Desiree Store in Oxford Street in Manhattan. <laughs> yes. yes, yes. International. I fully agree. <laughs> I fully agree because, you know, our other doll lines are international. So why can't Desiree dolls be? You know, so we want to be able to make sure we support, 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 support Desiree dolls and really being able to get behind the vision because it's greater than just the doll itself. Like you said, it's about being able to have representation and when I had contact you that was one of the things that we had spoke about you were like yeah. well I'm not really so much in the storyline that's not really where I'm at with it but but we can talk about the diversity of dolls yeah. and just to tie it in to storyline <laughs> uh, to tie it in into storyline is to understand that you can literally take your doll uh, that is a black doll and be able to talk about that in your storyline Right. Even if it's not so much black history, and I have seen some who speak about black history, and I think that's awesome. They may customize the doll and have it look like Betsy Coleman or, or another uh, black, you know, black, black historian, be it alive now or, or who's already passed. Um, or they'll, you know, just talk about black history in their storyline. Mm -hmm. Or they may just celebrate black love and have couples who are, you know, very passionate and loving. And, you know, it's something that we may not, have seen 10 years ago on TV. Yes. But exactly. now, you know, we're seeing more of it compared to, you know, where, where 10 years was for us. So yeah. being able to show your dolls just being human. Yeah. But being black while being human. So that right there is just like, you know, if you're going, how can I, especially if you don't have any black dolls in your storyline, yeah. how can I incorporate them in my storyline? Just like you would anyone else because they're still human. And it doesn't have to be, um, like, I've seen, <laughs> I recently saw a post that someone did, and they had re um, received one of the black male dolls from the Barbie line. And they said, well, I like him, but the more I look at him, he looks like he, he would be um, abusive to someone in a nursing home. 
And it kind of like hit me hard because I was like, you know, and I don't really think that they themselves even knew it may have been something that was uh, on an unconscious level. Yeah. But because we don't have enough representation, in my opinion, we don't have enough representation. It was very easy to take it in an offensive level. Right. So I just didn't comment. I was like, you know what? Because by comment, I may get a little upset. You may not have meant it. You may not have meant it like that. So how about I just, you know, take it. You don't know any better. You didn't mean it in that way. Right. Um, and walk away. But those things, especially whenever we, can, we, we still can count how many black doll lines we have and how many black dolls we have, yeah. male and female. And then you post and you go, well, this one looks like he would be abusive to people in in a nursing home, it criminalizes black. Right. And we don't want to criminalize black. And yeah. I'm not saying, oh, you don't have people who do bad things. You have people of all different races who do it. <laughs> you know, and you have all different races who do great things. So how do I incorporate a black doll into my storyline? Make them human. Yeah. Make them have emotions. Make yeah. them have feelings. Um, if you want to celebrate black history using your black dolls, do it. But don't just do it because it's February. Absolutely. Do it every day. Yes. Um, it never stops it doesn't <laughs> it doesn't so being able to celebrate those moments uh, i have a sister friend on here sister queen as we call each other and she has her dolls and they just they they're, they celebrate their family all the time and they just have yeah. love and, and you know they're just you know teaching about the importance of and, and she'll put like little, little lessons on there about being able to love each other and respecting each other that right there is an example of how to be able to have that black love um, and showing it. And it doesn't have to be like right in your face, but just treating your dolls as human. So how do yeah. I put them in there? That would be how. Yes. So exactly. I'm very I thankful. Yeah. Very good advice. Very good advice. Very good advice. Well, thank you. Well, I'm thankful to have you on here. And thank I really do. I want to be able to see to you me. explode. I oh, most definitely, but I want to see you explode with this because you're doing something that is phenomenal. And you're how old? Don't even tell me how old again. No, it's just the fact <laughs> you're being <laughs> that you're still such a young lady, and you know what I mean, and yet still such an older lady at the same time. You understand? You understand yeah. what I mean? And no, I taking something time. on that that someone who maybe in their sixties or seventies was like, I want to do, but didn't do. And you can still do it. And yeah. someone who's my age is like, oh, well, I didn't get a chance to do it. And you're inspiring us to know that we can do it. Thank you. So, so much. that's one of the things that I want to applaud you for is that you're taking on a test that's bigger than yourself, that you had a vision of when you were a teenager. And while you are still yet young, you're pursuing it. So that's my thing. So she's a baby. <laughs> well, you're, you're taking it. And you're doing something about it. You've gone further than just writing it on paper, which you do want to write on paper and make it plain. Yes. But you've gone further than just an idea. You went further than just writing it. You made it into a business plan. You kept the faith. You studied in school on it. And then you made uh, uh, an action yeah. to do it. So I applaud you for doing it. And I Thank know you. that it's going to grow. And I know that, especially because I can tell that you are motivated. I and you <laughs> and you have a love and desire for your people and for diversity and for community and not just so much from this perspective of of us of us being separated but more so for the unity of it yes. and that to me is what really shows the power and strength of what you're doing because it's not just about making it um a militant black thing yes. as much as it is about being able to see us for who we are so that we can all be incorporated as a human thing. So that's what I love about what you're doing because I don't want anyone to, and I think it's important to say this, uh, I don't want anyone to look at this live that we're doing and say, oh, well, this was so racist. It was just all about blacks and all about black dolls. And that's not what it's about. Absolutely. It's about being able to see us as blacks and, our, and, and, and black dolls as being a member of society, still being important, still being uh, valued as, as any human and valued as any doll. And understanding that once when we can value, just like you said early on, if we can get children, get these dolls into the hands of children and get them to accept 
brown of any shade. And I noticed that your girls have different shades of brown. Brown um, of any all shade. The same, actually. They're all the same for now. For and now. they're a little different. It actually, it may, it may have been the camera, but I thought I, I thought they were a little different. But but nonetheless, it was the lighting. <laughs> nonetheless, we need to see the brown in comparison to white dolls that they may have and being able to normalize it. Because yeah. that's what we're having an issue with in our adult minds. We cannot seem to normalize the difference in colors yeah. and the difference in hair texture. Yeah. And so I love what you're doing as far as normalizing it. And that's really what it's about. Yeah. Normalize and be able to feel comfortable purchasing a doll that's a different shade than you. Yes. I and see. then incorporating it into your play. Yes. Or gifting it to your daughter or yeah. your niece or your you know, whatever child that you have in your life, being able to feel comfortable making that purchase. Yeah. So I applaud you. Thank and you the work so that you're much. doing. I honestly appreciate Thank you. you. I appreciate your encouragement and just what you're doing as well with the storytelling. I am honestly oh, inspired. I'm still learning the aspects of the doll life. But honestly, like you're such an inspiration and I'm grateful for you reaching out to me. On oh, thank you. Well, I thank you. Anything that we can do um, as far as us working together, let me know because yes. I'm willing to, you know, help you to support that vision that you have because you're doing something that, that's phenomenal, that's well needed. We can never have enough representation. Definitely. And just like you said, to be able to represent African culture because we don't see it. Yeah. We don't see it. And we don't see it enough. And we need to be able to understand, just like you said earlier, the royalty. And yeah. you, the, you know, you said about her clothes and how regal it is. Yeah. So being able to see how regal that our people are and, and not be ashamed about it. Like, I love her princess tiara. Thank you. Not be ashamed <laughs> about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I thank you. And thank you for being patient with me this morning for you, this night for me. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. We had a little mix of the time zones, but we made it work. And that's what we do. We make it work. I know. I told my husband, I said, um, you know, we have to understand whenever we go to Shanghai <laughs> and we go and, it, and we're thinking, hey, we're going to get home you know, we're going to get there and get some rest. We're not because it's going to be the next day already. Yeah, I, it was like, I'm in the future. it threw me for a loop. <laughs> <laughs> there is, and I, I now I understand why they say jet lag. I didn't so, get it at first. <laughs> yeah, I, I said, I, get, well. yeah. I just assumed that. I should have known better. It's okay. We made it work. That's the main thing. As long as we made it work. <laughs> <laughs> I fully agree. Uh, Dorothea said, I will be buying a few of your dolls after this live. Hey, That's my mom. Dorothea. That's awesome. what I was talking about. Who, uh... Hey, mom. <laughs> yes, yes. Can send me a DM and I will sort it out for you. You don't have to go through the website. However you want to do it. Let's talk. Let's talk. <laughs> And he said, um, Sean Rashid said, different skin colors, prophetic ideas still. Yeah. <laughs> right here. Yeah. Black empowerment does not mean degrading other races. And that's so very true. Black yeah. empowerment does not mean degrading other races. So this live is in no way intended to degrade anyone from any other state or culture or ethnicity or nationality or creed. Uh, this live is to just be able to emphasize about the importance of representation yeah. of every ethnicity, nationality, race, and creed. It's about being able to embrace who we are because we have too many of our black girls yeah. who are ashamed of themselves. And even if they don't speak about it, they're not proud of who they are. Yeah. Um, and we have too many of them either you know, dying by suicide or just dying spiritually because yeah. they don't know who they are. They're not in touch with themselves right. and they're spending a lot of time trying to be what Barbie either has created from a long time ago. Now, not right now, not as they got all the yeah. different fashionistas and stuff, but, but the, the image that was created a long time ago yeah. or what they see on TV. And I'm not trying to, you know, hate on any of our uh, black icon females out there, but their representation for some of them can be, um, can be, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it can lead them down the wrong path of what it means to be a classy lady, you know. So we want to be able to embrace who we are. And that's what your downline is doing, is teaching us how to be able to embrace who we are. None of the clothes is 
skin tight and you know you don't have holes and you know this hanging out and that hanging out you have very classy dolls very beautiful yeah. dolls you have different you know you, you have the different hair textures so being able to embrace different hair textures all of my girls have different hair textures and they have, you know they have different complexions so being able to show them hey who you are is beautiful yeah. and then bringing them that doll that shows that it's so important yeah. it's important to us as adults and I'm, I'm just recapping on what we said about being yeah. able to um, have that as a healing agent if you've never had it before. Yes. And it's important for, for children to have um, as they grow up and they have to be able to embrace who they are and normalize, you know, who people are who are of different races. Yes. So doing what you're doing, we're definitely yes. going to be in touch. Absolutely. DesireeDolls.com. Desiree Don't Dolls. hesitate to contact me about anything, but DesireeDolls.com for your doll purchase. Good morning in Shanghai <laughs> and good night in your Eastern Standard Time. Yes, and my yes. Last word, I just want to say one more thing. Um, yes. One of the things that, you know, with or without Desiree, I always want to encourage is for our Black girls to always keep your head up high, be, be confident and be proud of who you are. Be proud. Um, the world tries to, you know, kind of suppress us, but we have so much um power we have so much within us and i feel like we just need to let it all out you know so keep your head up high I agree. be amazing let our amazingness show to the world so that's how i want to leave right. i fully agree i'm so glad that you said that i'm so glad that you said that so definitely you're a black queen, black sister, black <laughs> black friend of ours whatever, whatever. you're on your black family member through instagram whatever the case is Feel empowered about who you are because yeah. who you are, like you said, is beautiful. So I, I'm thankful for having you on here. I think we are going to have to definitely talk again uh, because I don't think, even though we have our, our dolls uh, and we have February, of course, I don't think that it's emphasized enough yeah. in our society about representation yeah. and the importance of having representation. So, uh, like I said, I'm certain that we hopefully will be able to have another um, time in order to talk about that yes. because of what you're doing and yes. the impact that you're having. I would love to be able to actually chat about um, the impact that you are having. Yeah. She's beautiful, just like your sister. <laughs> so, please. <laughs> so, you do have, you have siblings? Um, yes. You have, have siblings? Sean is my brother-in-law. He's being a big brother right now. <laughs> That's awesome. That's I'm awesome. So how, see, we're going to have to have another live. So how, how have you and your sister, have you guys done any work together with your dolls? Um, my sister, my nieces have um, my dolls. So, but we haven't done much work together with regarding the dolls. I don't think she's much of a doll enthusiast like me. She's not really obsessed like I am. So, but I would love to do some stuff with my nieces once I'm back home and I can. Okay. Okay. And actually my girls got me back into dolls. Really? Uh, Cause not, like I told you, it was a Barbie girl growing up. Yes. Yeah. And then they wanted to get into making the clothes and doing this and uh, customizing. And so, you know, just getting back into the rhythm with them is what really entered me into this world because they were like, well, since you already have an Instagram page, why don't you start posting? And then when I, yeah, when I hashtagged, all this stuff came up. Yeah. And, you know, from yeah. the doll community. And then I ended up creating a whole separate page. I used my, my hair um, page that I wasn't doing anything with to dedicate it to them. And then, of course, I ended up taking it over. <laughs> and now I'm just, I've been having fun with it. But it is so therapeutic and it is a lot of fun to be able to do. But and especially in my case, we have 10 kids. So I'm always looking for, you know, something that, that, <laughs> that I can crazy. have to okay, be have able to, to you know, mentally um, <laughs> decompress. <Yes. laughs> and that's what the dolls allow me to do. Yes. So, yes, yes, I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it. So it's awesome that your brother, your brother-in-law is on here as well, being able to say that. Um, you. <laughs> you know, he's enjoying what, what you're doing with the dolls. That's, that's awesome because support is important. Yeah. Absolutely. Support is very important, especially whenever you are venturing into a, a vision bigger than yourself. Yeah. You want to be able to have support, even if it's just one person or if it's a community of people being yeah. able to support. And that's one of the reasons why we have our live 
today as well to encourage you guys about supporting. Support DesireeDolls.com yes, because it is having an impact. And so I'm looking forward to, like I said, with our next live, if possible, if you're game for it, being able oh. to talk about the impact that your dolls are having um, so that we can, you know, be able to just keep garnering more support and having more people purchase it. Absolutely. I'm, I'm know, ready to talk. Down. We will talk. Um, we will talk. Yes, Absolutely. we will. <laughs> we will, we will. So yes, yeah, so next live we're gonna have. We will you know, let you know it'll be to be what is that TBA to be announced. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But we're gonna talk about the impact that these dolls are having because representation is important. So we want to be able to talk about that. Good night and good morning, ladies. Wonderful chat. Thank yes. You, so we are gonna talk again. <laughs> you have a wonderful you so Saturday. Enjoy. You too. Enjoy your night. I'm going to enjoy my day and start my day. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I know you're living in a future for me. This is right. like <laughs> I love it. I love it. This is awesome. All right, everybody. All right, you have a good one. You too. Bye, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Bye, bye. Thank you.